Sir, some of you before you were born, sir, battles they ground before you arrive. I call it the transfer of aggression. You see, sometimes as Christians, we must learn how to balance spirituality with reality. These things are the reality of life. Speaking in tongues, not confuse you. There are people, sir, in, before they were born, battles day. What do you think crippled Mephibosheth? An innocent seed of the tribe of Benjamin, the grandson of Saul. As Saul, as they born him, sir. Battles too much. Um, uh, servant wanted to run with the child. That is how the destiny of that young boy was completely crippled. That when David sent for a prince, he said, don't call me a prince. Who am I a dog? The battles of life made a prince a dog. Send him to Lodeba. Even when he was given opportunity, he felt he didn't qualify. He met battles before he was born. In fact, can I say this to you? Are you aware? Ladies and gentlemen, the Bosina Bahantai. Are you aware that the cry of David was not even for Saul? It was for Jonathan. He said, ah, how can an innocent man die like this? I, I, I know the father has a problem. Evil spirit are pursuing the father. But Jonathan is an innocent man. I know him. He's my friend. But sir, when you are a seed, there are certain grounds to fall. Battles they wait for you before you arrive. Jonathan was contending with the spirits that troubled his father. On the day the father died, the same spirit made sure Jonathan was wasted. That is why when David cried, he said, how are the mighty fallen? That was a mighty seed that fell by the battles he met. Why are the mighty fallen? And the weapons of war perish. He said, publish it not in God. And say it not in Escalon. Don't announce it. Nobody should hear this. How comes this person that had the potential to do so well ended up like this? The battles of tongues. There are many of you under the sound of my voice. You know what I'm talking about. Every attempt at life, something will prick you. Something will choke you. You know you are innocent. You know you are suffering from what you are not directly responsible for. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about the battles of the sea. Are you aware? My God, help me here. Are you aware? The Bible spoke about a children. In the book of Joshua, they about. I think Joshua conquered the walls of Jericho and then he stood on the walls. He said anybody that will build this wall will lay the foundation on his first son. And by the time he finished the building, the last born will die. Innocent children were born. Unfortunately for the one that was born first, as they dug foundation, Chuku Chuku took him away. With the battles on the ground swallowed him. Foolish father, he didn't know. He continued the building. By the time he was done, the last son has died. My question is, the children that died were innocent, sir. In the battles of life, innocency is not an excuse. You must arise and put on the armors of warfare. You must put on the helmet of salvation. You must put on the breastplate of righteousness. You must carry your sword, which is the word of God. You must carry your shield. You must put on your shield and determine to fulfill destiny. I won't die if I am not 100%. I am not settling for 30. I am not settling for 60. I have the capacity for 100. I prophesy wherever you are, under the sound of my voice, you will fulfill your destiny. 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 Lift up your hand and set fire. Shake your body and set fire. Move your leg and set fire. Shanta. I'm gonna lift up your hand and say, My father. I can hear you. Say, My father. I will not end up like this. I will fulfill my destiny. If you believe that, let me hear that. Say, I hear. Say, I hear. Say, I hear. Say, I hear. Sit down, let me finish this gospel. But the battles of the seed. So there are battles 
of the tongues. Tukuchuku everywhere. Tukuchuku everywhere. Tukuchuku everywhere. There was a girl. I was trying to ask her the name of the village today. She's from uh, Delta State. Ladies and gentlemen, all the girls in the family have terrible menstrual period. All of them. All of them. All of them. As soon as they gather money, they will be admitted. The money will finish before the flow of blood stop. Then they'll be preparing for the next month. Then she went, all of them. The devil made sure that nobody married them. How will you marry a woman that has the issue of blood? Where you want to start? As you are cutting her, if her period starts, it's a crisis indeed. She's not the only one. All the daughters. Then they went to her mother. The mother said, I know, I know. He didn't pass me. I know. I know. I don't get picking now. So I went to a river. I, I, will, I, will, I will get the name tomorrow. All of you that are from Delta, you, you know what I'm talking about. You, you know, that is why I understand why God sent Papa to, to Niger Delta. I'm telling you the truth. This ministry is for deliverance. I started watching Hour of Deliverance almost 30 years ago. And I know why he's not in Abuja. Because, sir, all over the world, apart from India, now for Niger Delta, altars plenty. Now, here then, they, all of you know what I'm talking about. You still visit village. Ah, Babana, then they water side. <laughs> As you visit, now so altar day. The girl told me, the mother told her, she went to a stream in their community. She mentioned the name. The stream has husband and wife. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And then look at what the villagers did. As you are entering the village, they created a statue of the river. So as you enter, you come under the influence of the deity. So she said the mother told her that she had no child. So she went to a juju priest who took her to the water and faced the wife's side and faced the husband's side. That is where her destiny finished. Before the girls were born, to to cut the weight, sir, that is why some of you can't explain what is happening to you. Because before you came, something they wait. As you try this, it took you. As you try that, it took you. As you try that, you say, "Man, I leave Nigeria. The country no good." Then you enter America and discover to has no respect for location. It everywhere. What people do and succeed if you try it na battles. Na battles. Na battles. That is why the Bible said, Whatever is not planted by God that I met in my life, my brother, they shall be. They shall be. They shall be. If you don't uproot them, don't go wound your picking. Don't go on your picking. Because seed we always give back to another seed. Stand your ground and put whatever it is that is too clean in your destiny. I think I have given the testimony here before. There is a woman in this worry. I met them on flight. All through the flight journey, she was managing her first son. With dada, dada everywhere. Sit down, sit down. We are on the flight. Sit down. He will stand up and say, Mama, I won't shake body. She goes, say, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down, not fly with day, not fly, not fly it with day. Then he will stand up. Where are my dogs? Now no carry my dog, enter plane. She said, dog can't enter plane. How from how from worry to, to Abuja will go carry dog? You will come back and meet your dog. He will say, okay. When the mother told me the story, on flight, I was concerned. I said, I'm a pastor. Something is happening to your son here. He said, I know. We are just used to it. In our family, in every generation, somebody must come out with dada that must have the juju. If you crave the dada, it will come out. You crave the dada, it will come back. You crave the dada, it will come back. Everybody that comes out with the dada is a sign that is the one to take over from the shrine. 
He said, my husband had money. We sent one of our children abroad. Even this one was doing well in school at a particular age. My brother, that, that began shake. Started smoking. Started drinking. They deported him from my brother. If I mention the name, it's a popular family here. Their father was once a manager of depot. Dada! She said to me, even the one that just died, died with his dada in the shrine. They said, this is my picking that we take over. And I told her, I said, look for word of life. In Man Zion, there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Look at my eyes. I stand by the vision of our Papa. Where deliverance is concerned, you shall be free. Who am I talking to here? You shall be free. You shall be free. You shall be free. You shall be free. Lift up your hands, say, My father, whatever is not planted, I will put them. Let me hear that email like a thunder. Babo Santa, slap your neighbor, I'm delivered. <laughs> And sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. If you stand up to pray this prayer, hey, Polota, let me tell you what God told me. Tomorrow night is family deliverance service. I, I like the way you are clapping. I like it. I'm, I'm telling you, I like it. Though. I like it. I like it. I like it. Tomorrow is family deliverance service. Anything that is fighting me and my brothers, anything that is fighting me and my sisters, I stand on their behalf. It shall be. Let me beg you if you have your family members within this region, please, not for their sake, for destiny's sake, invite them. Carry your children. All of you that are coming to God arise without your children. Bring your sons. Tell your brother, I will pay your transport. Come on. You carry your sisters, my brother. Help somebody's life. Every seed is going through certain battles. Every seed. Every seed. If you miss tomorrow, God told me, bless the anointing. The Bible said in your day and in your time, the body shall be taken from off your shoulder. The yoke shall be taken from off your neck. It shall be broken because of the... Anybody you bring to church tomorrow, if they don't thank you after service, then they didn't come to word of life. I know what I'm talking about. I like the way you are clapping, clapping it. God told me, anoint them. Your head will carry oil tomorrow. Where nobody has risen in your family, as a seed, you will break that camp. Where nobody has gone as a family, as a seed, you will get there. If your amen is the loudest, let me hear it like a believer. If you don't have oil, if you don't have oil tomorrow, carry empty container, come here. A neighbor will pour for you. But oil must touch your head. Put that hand on the head. Say, I'm a great seed. And I am rising. If you believe that, say, Amen. So look up here as you stand up to pray. Look up here. Look up here. The battles of the seed. The battles of the fowls of the air. The battles of natural phenomenon. The battles of the tongues in the soil. Which I call the transfer of aggression. The last one, sir, is the battle of foolishness. There was a seed that was doing well. From 10%, it entered 20. Hear this one, it will help you. From 20, the seed entered 30%. Instead of entering 40, 50, and 100, the seed became a victim of terrible choices and decisions. Many of you, 
the reason why you can't become 100 percent is the bad decision and choices you are making nothing they fight you because if anything was fighting the seed they wouldn't even be 30 percent they had their percentage potentials was growing progress was coming bad decision took away 70 percent from their life another one was 60 bad decision took away 40 percent hear this if you are not careful of the choices and decisions you are making you will incapacitate your own greatness you are the enemy fighting yourself you know what joshua said to israelite look at what he said to israelite he said oh israel choose this day choice whom you should serve then he gave them advice either the god your father served on the other side you know what it means because of the choices of their father is the reason why they can't enter the promised land it's not god choose whether the god of your fathers on the other side that your father chose or you will serve god because the god who brought your fathers out of egypt 10 percent gave them the wealth of egypt 20 percent divided the red sea 30 percent give them water from the rock 40 percent give them manna from heaven 50 percent brought them quail from the east wind 70 percent then your fathers by their choices died in the wilderness there are many of you here you are born again filled with the holy ghost but your daily choices and decisions is the reason why you may never maximize potentials the choices and your decisions are the reason why you may never fulfill your purpose your choices and your decisions that is why joshua advised them choose this day life if i look at what he said he said i set before you life and death i set before you blessing and cursing if you die it's your choice if you are cursed it's your choice are you aware that there are many of you that have chosen death and you are giving us the work to give you life your choices are the choices of death you wake up in the morning you choose death then you come to church in the evening and you are forcing us to give you life when by your activities and by your behavior and by your attitude you choose death and you want to give us the work to give you life heaven and earth because look at what joshua said he said i call heaven and earth to be a witness heaven and earth enforces the choices you make in life god and satan enforces choices you make if you choose life god enforces it if you choose death satan get to work here it is as i close don't miss it romans chapter 8 verse number 6 the bible said to be spiritually minded is life so how do i choose life by minding spiritual things it may not make sense make that choice make that choice make that choice sir it is a spiritual choice to follow a father honor a father respect a father and submit to a father it's a spiritual choice for life It's a spiritual choice to determine that certain percentage of your income you won't eat it. To be spiritually minded is life. A carnal man may not understand the things of the spirit, but not you that is spiritual, sir. Every time you act, certain actions and behavior invariably is a choice. It's a choice. Noah had three children. The choice of one to expose the nakedness of the father brought him under a curse. So many of you understand my voice. Sir, that you choose to come to church today 
It's not a customary exercise. It's a spiritual choice. It's a spiritual choice of life. How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the oil. So you say, I'm coming to church. No, sir. You chose the oil of fathers to work for you when you came. I like the way you are clapping. Clap again. It's a choice. It's a choice. It's a giving of a quality offering. It's a choice. It's a choice. Do you know the problem? The world does not know the consequences of our choices. So it appears foolish to them. Why are you going to church every day? He doesn't know he's not going to church every day. It is a sexy life every day. Am I talking to somebody here? Why are you giving every day? No, sir. It's not a gift. Sometimes the world makes you see what has left you. They didn't show you what entered you in return. It's not about what left me. It's about the blessing. As I gave, something called blessing entered me. And when the blessing processes me, for the blessing of the Lord make it uh, rich and add no sir. Choices. The kind of choices you are making. I am not a doctor. I know you won't live long. Since you have chosen to be eating drug like water and swallowing drug like Abu, I know very soon your kidney will fail you. I don't need a doctor. There are choices you make, and it's a reason for premature death. Not be dead, that will kill you. It shortens your life. Ah, are you not seeing contemporary history? What killed Michael Jackson? Okay, let's leave that Jackson aside. He's not a church member. What killed Whitney Houston? When she died, my brother, people went back to her song and saw angels singing. Whitney Houston, drug, died cheaply and carelessly. Then, guess what? She left empire and estate for an only child, useless girl, went and died like the mother. The same way the mama died. In the same bathroom, with drugs, the same pattern, died and left money for their grandmother who chose life. Their mother is a dickness in the church. My brother, watch your choices. He said, no, me, I just can't do without it. I just like Kogogoro. My brother, now premature death to choose them. You say anything for sketch, you they pursue. <laughs> My brother, now premature death with that, oh. The greatest of diseases are hidden in immorality. The worst of sicknesses. The worst. The worst of sicknesses. Let me say this to you. I think I gave the testimony here. A, a woman walk up to me and say, Pastor, is there anything God can do? I married one of the best men in life. If I die, I will marry him again. But I have not been able to give back because in my university days, I was a friend to one occult guy, and then he got me pregnant. He was poor, I was poor. And I knew that I needed to terminate it. So he took me to a quack nurse in one chemist. Pastor, it was God that said I shouldn't die. I bled and bled by a useless work of a nurse who was not a nurse indeed. I almost died. It ruptured. My womb had to be removed. If I know I will marry the kind of man I have married now. I for where I am Panto. He said, Pastor, my husband is a general. If I mention the man's name, you know him. He has built houses for my parents, giving my brothers capital for business. Every time I see his kindness, I owe him a child. But I don't have the womb. Beautiful looking woman. She will end up in 60%. Her choices are taken away 40. Choices. That is why one of the benefits of coming to God's house 
is that it teaches you wisdom. Thy word have I hidden in my heart. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Can I say this to you? For every one of you under the sound of my voice, may God show you mercy for your choices. I like that. May God show you mercy for your choices. Any choice that has tampered with your life, whatever that thing you are going through, by your wrong choices, by your wrong decision, I stand here today. May mercy locate you here. I like that. May mercy locate you. May mercy locate you. If your amen is louder, let me hear like a believer. Apostle Paul Odola, the founder of Paul Odola Ministries International and the senior pastor of Dominion Power Assembly International Incorporated. A seasoned and dynamic preacher with uncommon insight into scriptures. Can I talk to somebody here? I'd like to announce to you that life does not take excuses. Life does not take failure. Life does not celebrate emptiness. Whatever it is that has made your life a mockery, God will answer you. He is graced with the mandate to bring men into absolute dominion in all ramifications, with the commission of restoring the dignity of humanity through the preaching of the word of truth. Ladies and gentlemen, as our faces differ, so does our next level. He is a regular speaker at Christian conferences, seminars, and crusades. He is a publisher of several inspirational and motivational journals. Whatever condition you are in, there is none of God expires tonight. Apostle Paul Odola, 